Hello guys, Technical Minecraft, also known as Andrew, here with another episode of this Redstone class. Now, last Redstone class, I taught you the basic, you know, what hard powering, soft powering is. Now I'm going to teach you a little bit of techniques for busing. Now, busing is how you get signals from one point to another. Now, the most obvious is to just have a Redstone line like this, but the problem is... It only goes 15 blocks. Remember, if the signal peters out after 15 blocks, it won't give another signal, as you can see right here. So, in the last episode, I proposed a solution. Have a repeater like this, and then that repeats the signal back to 15. But you're not doing it as efficiently as possible. So, remember, when redstone runs into a block, it gets soft-powered. When it's soft-powered, it activates, you know, any component that's on top of it or next to it or near it in any way, as you can see. Uh, so what you can do is take an output, a repeater output from this soft powered block, and this output right here will be 15. So you just increased your range by one block. Now to do it by one more block, you just put one right here. So this repeater will hard power this block right here, and then this redstone right here will be 15. So you just have a repeated signal strength with two extra blocks. So what if you want to have your signal go directly up? Now, this is a little bit of a challenge. There are a few ways to do it. One of the most notable is the torch tower. So remember how I said that torches basically invert signals? So that can be stacked. So obviously this block is being soft powered, which will turn off this torch. And this torch is turned off, so this block is not being powered, which will make it so this torch is on, because it has the opposite state that this block is in, which is off. Then this torch will also turn off because this torch is on and it's kind of a pattern repeating like this so this is what a torch tower looks like it does have a little bit of delay because each torch takes one tick or one tenth of a second to toggle to its correct state as you can see uh, there's also one more way if you want more delay now there have been times where i've wanted more delay in torch towers so what you can do is make something sort of like this Place a torch right here, then a torch right here, then a torch right here, then a torch right here. And this will basically act like the same way, except it will have more delay on it. So if you want more delay, you can sort of use this design. Now this can be stacked up all the way to the world limit right over there. But one thing that can't be stacked up to the world limit is this technique right here. So this one has no delay. So if you don't want delay at all, you can use this technique. But the problem is it is limited. By signal strength. So what you need to do is just have alternating slabs. So I usually like to place two rows of blocks sort of like this and just have alternating slabs. So make sure they're all on like the top half of the block. One block to the left or one block to the other side and just keep repeating this pattern. So one block here, one block here, one block here, one block here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these temporary blocks and I can actually place redstone dust like this. And I'm going to go ahead and get a redstone lamp right here just to show you that this works. So this redstone is running directly into this redstone lamp. And as you can see, there is no delay whatsoever. But the problem is, again, this is limited by signal strength. So, so you can't have this tower go more than the signal strength will allow. Now, instead of the normal slabs that we've been using for quite a while, you can actually use glass. Now, this was made possible in a recent update, I believe. Uh, glass is now a transparent block, just like slabs, so glass has the same exact effect if I turn this off and on, as you can see the lamp turns off and on. So these are what's called transparent blocks, and their properties allow you to bust redstone directly up, just like this. Now in a future episode I'm going to be talking more about pistons and what they do, uh, but here's a little lesson for now. You can put redstone blocks on their face, and they'll stick. So this is a compact way to just bust it up one if you only want one delay because pistons have one de tick delay um, but you can actually make this further now again I'm not going to be teaching you everything about pistons that's for a future episode but what you need to know is that they can hold 12 blocks on their face they can push and pull a maximum of 12 blocks so we can use that to our advantage and have sticky blocks on their faces so to take advantage of that we can have 11 sticky blocks followed by one redstone block like this so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven then a redstone block so as you can see we have this whoop, <laughs> we have this massive tower over here 
And that's how you can bust the signal up just one block. So if I take a glazed terracotta, because this is what we will be needing right now. So the problem with this is that you will need glazed terracotta. Now glazed terracotta does not stick to sticky blocks. So as you can see, uh, I can't get everything in my field of view like that. Uh, but as you can see, it will not be sticking to the sticky blocks. And also one more thing to note, slime blocks other than honey blocks can also be used. Now this is a technique that I used in my rock, paper, scissors machine, which is on my Instagram. I don't have the tutorial on YouTube, unfortunately, but this is a reliable way to bust redstone up and down. Just know that if you have an extra block just like this, that will make it 13 blocks instead of the 12 blocks that it can actually push. So the piston will not be able to pull these. And if you have over here less than 12 blocks right here, then if you have a block on the side of this little tower right here, it will be pulled along with it, unless it is glazed terracotta, as you can see. Now just one final thing to note about this, it doesn't have to be vertical, it can be horizontal or downward. So let's say you have a really compact circuit, and you want one side to be powered, let's say this side, but not the other side, or not the other line right here. Because redstone blocks are indiscriminate, they will power anything that is next to them. So what you can do is instead of have this be a redstone block, you can take a cauldron or a chest or a composter. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a cauldron over here. And what you can do is fill it with water right here and take a comparator output right here. So just have a cauldron right here, put water in it and have a comparator. So as you can see, this redstone will not interact with this cauldron right here, uh, but this redstone will because the comparator is detecting the fact that the cauldron has water in it. So if I go ahead and retract this, as you can see, it will only power one of them. So if you don't want to use any of the designs I already showed you, there is one more kind of main way of busting things around that you should know, and it is the observer line right here. So as we discussed in the last episode, observers, when something happens in front of them, will give a one tick pulse, and each observer has a delay of one tick. Now what you can do is send updates through observers. So as you can see, we have this observer facing this observer and this observer right here. You can do this in all directions. You can make it curve right here, as you can see. You can make it go up, you can make it go sideways, and you can make it go down. But one thing to be wary of is it has a lot of delay because each one of these observers right here has a one tick delay. Now you can send observer signals through a ton of different blocks and one of these blocks is the dropper. So you can make a setup sort of like this where this observer will hard power this block which will power this dropper which this observer will detect which will hard power this block powering this dropper which this observer will detect and that can go on and on and on. So as you can see if I put a block right here it'll go ahead and update that lamp over there and that'll bust the one tick signal over to this lamp. Now, redstone dust can also be used as a sort of medium to send these signals through. So as you can see, if I place a block right here, it'll send the signal through. Now, this can get a little confusing because when you really think about it, this observer should detect two updates because what happens is this, I'm gonna go ahead and just place a dust right there. What happens when you update this observer is this redstone turns on and off, as you can see. So in theory, this observer should detect two updates, but in practice, that's not what happens because observers are programmed to, well, observers are just programmed to receive signals from each other. So I'm sorry if that gets a little confusing. It confuses me too, but it's for the better. Now, there are a few more niche ways of busting redstone, but these are the sort of ways that I bust redstone and that a lot of people bust redstone because these are the most common techniques that I showed you right here. And this is the end of the class. So if you enjoyed, please do leave a comment. Maybe like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more of these sort of tutorials. I will have another tutorial just like this coming out next week. Um, if you want to vote on what I build next on my actual tutorials, you can go to my Instagram at technical underscore Minecraft to vote and to see the same tutorial just in a different sort of format with diagrams and letters and just pictures, stuff like that. I have been Technical Minecraft, otherwise known as Andrew, and I will see you in the next video.